Blessing family. Let's stand to our feet and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's already begin to usher in the spirit of worship and praise unto God this morning. He's been so gracious. He allowed us to make it here one more time, a brand new month. He's worthy of the praise on today. Let's give him a hand clap of praise again. Hallelujah. I'll be reading to you from the word of God out of Joshua chapter 1, beginning at verse 6. And the word of God says, Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you. He is with you wherever you go. Amen. Let us bow before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, oh, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. God, we come before you just saying, thank you, God. We thank you for everything because we deserve nothing. But your unfailing love just keeps on pouring out the blessings, God, and we just say thank you. God, we thank you that you've brought us through to this seventh month of the year 2021, God, and nobody but you could bring us this far. And we say thank you, God. God, we, your people, stand now before you, expecting your presence on here today. God, we're expecting a miracle in healing on today. God, we're expecting a miracle of unification on today, God. We are just expecting you to do a mighty work because you are our mighty God. God, we just thank you for your traveling grace and mercy, and we pray for those that are on their way. We pray for our brothers and sisters, God, that we can even touch over the airwaves. God, and we lift up the pastor today, that you continue to pour out your blessing on him, continue to give him your vision, and that we, your people, catch the vision. God, we just love you, and we can do nothing without you. And so I'm asking that when we leave this place, God, that we've left here lighter, that we leave our burdens here, God, because we know your shoulders are big enough to carry them. And God, we'll be ever so careful to always give your name all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray and say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, clap your hands. Let's give God praise. Come on, come on, come on. Put your hands together and give him glory if you're grateful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. The Bible says it like this. Clap your hands, all ye people. And then it says to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Anybody grateful for another month we have stepped into? Hallelujah. We have stepped into the season of July. We got another six months left. Glory to God. And I believe it's going to be greater than what's been. Come on, just do me a favor. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. Come on, get ready for your next. Come on, anybody expecting great things in your next six months? Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead and put your hands together. We came to praise them in this place. Just do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we came to praise them this morning. Come on, put your hands together with us. Let's praise them. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Come on, let's take it back real quick. Come on. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. You say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Say praise the Lord. Clap your hands, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody.
to clap my hands. I come to clap my hands. I come to give him praise. I come to give him praise. He's been so good. He's been so faithful. We came to give him praise. We came to give him praise. Jesus, we lift you. Jesus, we bless you. This is what we came to do. Break that music. What do you want the Lord to say? Oh, what do you want the Lord to say? Come on. Well done. Well done. Good and faithful. Enter in the joy of the Lord. Come on, do it again. Oh, what do you want the Lord to say? Oh, what do you want to say, well done, well done, my good and faithful answer in, answer in the joy. One more time, come on. What do you want the Lord to say? Shout out! 
out of on wings as an eagle. Yes, you got it. Today is your day of victory. You wanna declare that yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. No matter what comes, no matter what goes. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Everybody clap your Somebody put your hands on Come on, this is what we do David said, I will bless the Lord at all times And that is praise Shall continually be in my mouth One more time, musicians, break that music Can't nobody say to, to me like Jesus Can't nobody to me like the Lord can't nobody to me like Jesus he's my friend one more time so can't nobody to me like Jesus okay to me like the Lord can't nobody to me like Jesus he's my friend What is his name? Can you just put his name in the atmosphere? Come on, Jesus is his name. The risen yes, Savior. Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, Hallelujah. we will have our offering at this time. Put your hands together and give God praise. Amen. Lord, we bless him. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless God for our music ministry. Bless God for them. Come on, bless God for them one more time. Ain't nobody can do me like Jesus. That's one of those old church songs that we need to make sure that we remind the new school and the new church about that. Nobody can do you like Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. Come on, some of you older saints in here, you need to tell some younger saints that nobody can do you like Jesus. You can look them in the face and say, I'd have been where you've been. I done tried women. I done tried money. I tried drugs. I tried everything else. But now at this point in my life, I know that nobody can do me like Jesus. Amen. And he is my friend when I have no friend. He's my friend when everybody else is gone. Can't nobody love me like Jesus can love me. We thank God so much for him. Are you glad to be in God's house on this morning? Amen. Amen. It's a privilege. Every time God allows us to come into the house, we're like-minded believers. Listen, don't mistake this. This is a privilege to be able to be in the house of God to worship. Amen. 
That's one of the good things out of the pandemic. After we come out of the pandemic, now we have a greater appreciation for meeting with other like believers in the house of God. I say, it's good to see you worshiping in the house to worship God on today, man. We're at the point of our service where we welcome you. If there's anybody here that you are worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first time in the church. Just listen, slip your hand up or raise your hand. Amen. Thank God for our sister in the back. Amen. We have our brother and our sister here in front and another sister in the back. We thank God so much for you. The ushers are going to come and give you a connection card. Please Please put your hand up so they can still see you, and they're going to come give you a connection card. Please fill that out and put that in the offering basket uh, when the offering time comes around on behalf of our church and our pastor, Pastor Harvard M. Walker. We are glad that all of y'all are here with us on today. You have many choices of churches you can go to, but we're glad God brought you this way. Amen. Amen. Bless God one more time for our visitors. Come on. Bless God one more time for our visitors. Make them feel welcome. Amen. Amen. And then, if we have anybody that's worshiping with us online for the first time, we know you have many churches you can tune in with, but we are glad that you're with us on this morning. So we have a custom of letting you know that we're glad that you're here, and our church just gives you a round of applause. So come on, church, give our online visitors a round of applause. Come on, let them know we're glad they're with us on this morning. Amen. 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 On behalf of the pastor and the entire church, we are glad that you're with us on this morning. Do me a favor. Let's put I'm a visitor in the comments or then let's say, hey, I'm a return visitor. Somebody from our fellowship is going to respond to you to let you know that we are glad that you are here. One more time for our visitors online. Amen. 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 It's our offering time. Amen. Amen. And it's time to bless God with our gifts. Our ushers and our brothers are going to come at this time. The scripture tells us that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world, and listen to this, those who dwell within. That means that everything belongs to God and we belong to God as well. So as we get ready to give our best gifts unto the Lord, just know that you are just giving back to God what really already belongs to him. And we give it to him as an act of obedience, and God blesses our obedience. And so I'm going to ask that you will bow with me as we get ready to pray over these offerings and then bring your best gifts unto the Lord. Bow with me for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for the ability to give to you. We thank you for these offerings and how you have blessed us with abundance, how you've blessed us with everything that we need, Lord God. And we give a portion back to you, God, in obedience to you, asking that you would bless it and that you would multiply it. We pray, Lord God, that we would be faithful stewards of the church that we would do what needs to be done, that we could be a witness to the world in this age to let people know that God is real and Jesus saves. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need to give by credit or debit, you can get, I see our brothers and sisters in back. Bring your best gifts unto the Lord. They're going to bring up on the screen the different ways that you can give if you're with us online. Bring your best gifts to God. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we, we come are out. When we come and when we go. We can. We can Sickness, poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. want to worship him worship God he is our strength we have power in the name of Jesus you are my strength hallelujah
precious to me. You are my strength, oh, strength like no other, strength like no other. It reaches to me. Come 
Get a lot of hand clap of praise. For my heart is filled with praise. That when I just think about his goodness, think about all that he has done and is still doing. Christ, glory. How, how many of you are just thankful? I mean, come on, come on. I mean, just really thankful because you know that you don't deserve all of God's blessings. But, but he finds a way to just keep blessing you over and over and, and over and, and over again. And truly, I am, I am thankful, amen, for all that he has done and all of his his blessings, amen. When I, when I was on my way to the sanctuary on this morning, I, I just began to thank God as I drove down Almeda. Thank him for, for his goodness. Doesn't mean that everything was going well. Doesn't mean that I was in the best of health. That finance was good. But I just begin to thank him for who he is. Come on, come on, come on. Let's let's just be real. Just just thank him for who he is. That if he don't do nothing else, I don't know about anybody else, but I can thank him because he's done enough. I'm here. I'm still alive. I'm I'm in my right mind. I, I've I've had to deal with some stuff, but but I don't look like what I've gone through because of who he is he, he's been better I, I understand that better now he's been better to me than I've been to myself I, I, I didn't understand that back then when, when I used to hear the old church say that but now I know that he is he's an awesome God he's a God to be glorified and so we are truly truly thankful for all that he has has done in, in the book of Job the 28 chapter and then we're going to also look in the book of Ephesians the fourth chapter 
And then we're going to share with you what the Lord has given us. Because in this season that we are in, it is important that we understand that God is doing something. And I've learned that what he's doing, he's perfecting us. I, I shared with him at, at 8 o'clock, I'm stronger now. Our faith is stronger. I believe in him more now than ever before. Because when we think about it, God allowed us to go through some things that we'd never, never have went through. But we can testify today that we're still here. Amen. That he's given us another chance to uh, to get it right, and I'm 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 just I'm just talking because somebody need to know it's God, it's it's God. We didn't we didn't come this far by ourselves, Amen. Look what it says. It says, "Surely there is a vein for the silver, and a place for the gold where they find it. Iron is taken out of the earth, and brass is flowing out of the stone." He said, in the end to darkness, and he searches out all perfection, the stones of darkness and the shadow of death, verses 1 through 3. And then Ephesians 4 and 11 says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and to the measures of the, measures of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. And we want to talk about understanding the process in perfecting. Understanding the process in perfecting. You may be, be seated. I shared with our early service that I believe that one of the greatest revelations a saint of God can receive is the knowledge that once we come into the knowledge of God that are perfecting the change of things begin to come to pass. We are no longer the same and, and we might not be where we want to be. But I'm sure that many of us can thank God that we are not what we used to be. Maybe I need to speak about myself. I, I haven't always been where I am today. I, I, I stumbled a lot and failed a lot. But but I thank God that every day he's working on me. I, I, I remember what Paul said. He said that when, when he knew that God was working on him. He, he said words not like not that he had already attained. Or was already perfect. But, but he understood the system. The, the process that, that he had to go through. That, that is why he, he said that, that, that he had learned to, to press on. Anybody pressing today, that, that, that simply means that, that it's not easy. You can't see your way. You, 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 you seem to be more in the valley than on the mountaintop. It seems that you're more down and up. But, but, but every time you turn around, you, you find yourself pressing Pressing to go to work, pressing to be that mother, pressing to be that father, pressing to be that co-worker. Because every time you turn around, if it's not one thing, it's another. I'm sure that all of us in here, that, that we've gone through something, we had to deal with with some things we had to face some things. There, there have been some things that are happening in our lives that we didn't expect. But, but we have learned that if we trust God, God will bring us through. I, I need about three or four witnesses here today. So, 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 so we find that, that, that Paul said that he had learned to, 
to press on, to make it because of Christ Jesus in Philippians 3, 12 through 15. So, so he said, read it even when you, read it when you have time because he said, brothers, listen, I, I have not made it yet. I, I tell people all the time that, that, that I've been on this journey a long time, but I, but, but I haven't made it yet. I, I, I still find myself sometimes stumbling. I, I know you got it, and you 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 perfect, and you don't make mistakes, but, but sometimes I find myself stumbling. That's what Paul said. Paul said, I haven't made it yet, and, and, and he realized that he couldn't make it on his own. And I don't know about anybody else, but I need God. I, I need him every day to walk with me. I, I need him every day to talk to me. I, I, I got to have a relationship with God. I, I, I understand that I can't make it by myself. I'm, I'm kind of like Paul because every time I try to do right, evil it, it's always present. Maybe, maybe there's somebody here that want to be real and, and, and say, I need God. I can't make it by myself. I, I need God to work on me, to perfect me, to, to, to change me to, to, to mold me I, I need God I, I, I need God in this this twisted world because sometimes it's seen as the world is, is preaching louder than the church so, so I need God that, that's all Paul he's saying but, but, but then he says but one thing I do you see Paul's life was, was messed up that's not the story but I, I, I need to help you to get where God is trying to take you Paul Paul's life was messed up but Paul said I, I'm forgetting what's behind and moving forward to what lies ahead and you got to understand that in order for you to get where God wants you to be there are some things in your life you got to shake some of you can't have a relationship because you're still holding on the past and, and every time God sent a good man to your life you're thinking about what old Joe did to you and, and you're thinking about how Sally treated you and you can't love the way God says you ought to love but, but Paul says that I got to put some things behind me you see if you want to change some things in your life, like, like Paul, I know it's not my story, but, but like Paul, you, you got to press your way. You got you to fight off some things. Anybody ever have to fight off some things, things you said you weren't going to do no more, you weren't going to say no more, you weren't going to see him no more, you weren't going to see her no more, but, but something keeps pushing you that way till you get to the point that you got to fight it off, you praying about it, you fasting about it, but, but every time you turn around, you're right back in the same little circle. I came to tell somebody that God is trying to perfect you. He's, he's trying to change you. That, that's the reason you're going through what you're going through. That's the reason, amen, you feel the the way you feel that's the reason amen you're feeling under pressure is because God is trying to perfect you but keep in mind there's a goal you're trying to reach uh, that Paul says it was an upward call in Christ Jesus and as a mature believer you, you got to learn how to think this way that's the reason I tell people you got to protect your mind because the, the enemy knows that if he can get your mind, he, he, he can get the rest of you. The, the enemy knows that, that, that if he plays with the mind long enough, he, he can cause you to stumble. That's the reason I tell people all the time Eve's problem was not that she was talking to the serpent. She just talked to him too long. Because if they can get your mind, some of you been in love, you, you knew it started in your mind. When he gets your mind, amen, he can, he can cause you to do what he wants you to do. But, 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 but the Bible says you got to protect the mind. It's a daily fight. Now watch this. Because the second part of our text says that God has give it he, he know exactly what we need he has given us pastors preachers teachers for the perfecting perfecting of the saints for the shaping of his people to the, the molding of his people amen so 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 i hear what paul is saying but but what is the perfecting what is God saying? 
God is talking about growing in him. He, he, he's, he's talking about growing in the knowledge of his word. Growing in the faith. Because all we have is God's word. We, we, we can't depend on nothing else. If, everything has, has basically come and gone. But, but his word still stands. Everything is changing, but, but his word is still the same. And, and, and that's the reason I tell people that, that you ought to have a word in your heart. You ought to have a verse in your heart that, that when you can't get to the preacher and you can't get to your prayer partners, that, that, that you can quote in your heart that, that no weapon form against me. You, you, you can quote in your heart that, that the Lord is my shepherd, that I shall not. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about late in the midnight hour when nobody hears your cry that, that, that you can call on the word of God and something about the word of God that gives you strength when you're weak and give you light when you're in darkness. It's something about the word of God when you feel like you're all by yourself. It, it, it makes you realize that you have a friend that's the closest than any brother you got to understand perfecting is to, is to help us to understand our, our purpose our, our power and our promise because God made us a promise don't, 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 don't lose hope because God has made us a, a, a promise and, 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 and church can I tell you that God will not go back on his word. So, so he talks about the perfecting of the saints. Is, is God working on and, and through and with us. In other words, living for God is a, is a never ending process of learning and seeing the things of God. You might can agree with me that every time we think we got this thing down pack, something happens to, to let us know that we are not as close as we think we are. When, when, when we say we're going to do better, something comes up and we find that we are not able, amen, to, 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 to keep our word. So, so, so what God, he has a way of knowing, amen, what's going to happen before it happens. And so he, what, he prepares us, he, he teaches us, he, he, he shows us. And as long as we are serving God, we are in a perfecting process. Somebody just say process. That, that, that's why Jesus, amen, that, that he spent three and a half years of his earthly journey alongside his disciples because he knew that he had to teach them. He had to teach them by example. He had to teach them with his word. He had to help them in bringing his disciples into the understanding of his kingdom to make them understand that his way of thinking was not their way of thinking. Isn't that good news? That, that he don't think the way we think. He, he loves us in spite of that, that when we stumble and fall, he, he's not like that friend who, who walks away from you, but he stays right there by your side. And can I just testify, because you got to understand that sometimes God carry us when we can't carry ourselves. And I need about five or six of you and say, yeah, I've been what God had to carry me God had to bring me through God had to make a way because I couldn't make it by myself church God is working on you right now don't, don't forget that he, he's working on you as, as, as great as Jesus was in that time there were still times that his disciples missed the mark don't, don't lose hope if you miss the mark don't, don't lose hope if you, if you stumble. If you, if you fall seven times, get up the eighth time. Because God is with you. Because his disciples and many of us today, we miss the fact that everything was a test. It's a test. We, we, we've gone through our biggest tests that we had ever experienced. Some pass, some fail. Some, some is still living under the pressure of the test. You, 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 you ever had that where he was worried about if, if you passed that test or not when you was in school? You, you got to understand, you got to have such a relationship with God that, that you know that you passed the test. 
that you kept the faith, you kept trusting, you kept you kept believing that that the enemy kept knocking, amen. But but you was able to to stay focused and keep trusting in God because you got to understand the enemy wants to distract you. Didn't, didn't, didn't you notice, amen, that, that while we was gone, amen, through the worst of the virus, there was, that was a lot of things happening, amen. It was a distraction to keep us from focusing on some other thing. But we thank God for you who held on to your faith and kept believing in God and kept trusting in God. And even if you doubted for a few minutes, you knew how to turn back to God and you begin to quote to yourself that this too shall pass and God is going to bring me out. Maybe I was the only one, but, but I kept trusting God. Fear stepped in, but I realized that God was greater than any monster, any giant that would be in my life. I kept trusting in God. If I stumbled, I got up because I knew God was going to bring me out. And I need about 15 or 16 people that can be a witness today and say, yes, I stumbled, but God brought me through. Yes, I came to with dealing with fear, but somehow, some way, God renewed my faith. I understood that if I stumbled, God was going to pick me up because he's that kind of God. He did it yesterday. He'll do it today. He brought me out of horror pit. He He'll bring me out again. I was in darkness. He was a light in my darkness. Is there anybody can testify that God will do it again? Somebody just shout, do it again, God. Do it again, God. I'm stumbling, but do it again, God. I'm scared, but do it again, God. He's that kind of God. <laughs> he's that kind of God that he's able to me God whatever you're doing in this season don't do it without me perfect me God if I have to go through a storm you do it God perfect me God if I have to come up around the back side of the desert you do it perfect me you, you got to be ready because there are only three kind of people those that are in trouble those who just come out of trouble and those who are on their way to trouble. But thank God for perfecting me. That now I am stronger. Everything that Jesus did was about perfecting his people. And, it, and it's no different today. It is, it's still about perfecting the saints of God. And the mission of God hasn't changed. But watch this, because we need to understand what it means when we talk about being tested. When we ask why God tests us or allows us to be tested, we are in a way admitting that testing comes from God. Let that sink in. But watch this. When God, as we say, tests us, He's really doing what I call a love thing. It, it, it's not like when your friend tests you or man tests you. Uh, it, it's different. It's like, a, it's, it's like a love thing. Remember in Psalms 26 verse 2 and Psalms 139 verse 23, it, it, said, it said David wanted God's testing. David, he, he wanted God's testing by, by asking him to examine his heart and mind and, and, and see, amen, that, that, that they were true to him. And, and even when Aaron, Abraham, was tested by God in the, in the matter of sacrifice and Isaac, Aaron obeyed and showed to all the world that he's the father of faith. Now, in both, amen, when you study the Old Testament and New Testament, the words translate test to mean to prove by trial. To prove by trial, to, to, to prove by going through something. That, that, therefore, when, when God so-called tests us, God's purpose is to prove to us that our faith is real. Because you got to understand that if your faith is not worth testing, then you don't have faith. Uh, Y'all missing that. You, you, you got to understand that if your faith cannot be tested, you need to go back to what grandmother called Nebone Station. 
you 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 got to spend some time before God. You got to you got to pray and fast until you have what we call real faith. That that faith where the Bible says is the substance of things hoped for uh, and the evidence of things not seen. You got to you got to have that kind of faith that that says even though I don't see it, I know God is going to come through. You you got to have that kind of faith. Where you don't lose hope. Because you got to understand it's not that God needed it to prove it to himself. But because he knows all things. But, but he is, he is proven, Brother Morton, to us that, that our faith is real. You, you ever been tested and when you, when you came out of it you felt good about yourself? But, 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 but before you can celebrate the enemy attacks again, see, see, you got to have real faith. You, you, you can't have that make-believe faith. You, you, you can't have, amen, that, that, that grandmother faith that says, I'm, I'm trusting because grandmother trusts. You, you, you got to have that, that kind of faith where it's been tested and you know God can do it. You got you, you to have that kind of faith that, that when you're facing the enemy, you can say, here I go again. But, but you can stick your chest out because you know some way, somehow, God is going to bring you through. And I need about 15 of you that say I've been tested, I've been tried, my faith is stronger in God and you can testify because if he did it yesterday he'll do it today you got to have that kind of faith uh, that you know that you know uh, that you know that you know uh, that you know that you know that God is going to bring you through I've been tested, I've been tried but I know God is able to bring me through. I got to heavy on to a close. Real faith says, I, I can't see it yet. But, but I know it's going to come to pass. Uh, so the way to test whether or not something can stand and survive, it, it got to be tested under pressure. You see, before a car, a man ever crosses Amen. A bridge, that bridge has been tested over and over again. And so that's what I've, I've learned is that that bridge has been tested under heavy weight. Weight has been put on it and, and over and over until it passed the test. And there's someone here today, you may not understand why you're going through what you're going through. You might not understand why if it ain't one thing, it's another. Because you got to understand that maybe this word is not for everybody. But, but, but it's for somebody who, who can't quite figure out why is it that every time I turn around, I'm dealing with something. Because if it's not home, it's my job. If it's not my son or my daughter, it's my spouse. I, I'm talking to somebody that seems to have more bills than money. I, I'm talking to somebody that every time they put one foot up, uh, they, they're taking two steps backwards. Uh, but, but I came to tell you that the Lord uh, is working on you. Uh, and, and I found out that in order for him to shape and mold you, you got to go through some things. Uh, that, that's the reason you got to be careful when you see somebody and you say, I want that kind of faith. Uh, because you got to understand those people have gone through something. Uh, those people have faced some trials uh, and tribulations. Uh, those people people have seen a man many valleys in their life uh, they gotta go through something and now they know that God is able the Bible said uh, that Job went through some real hardships uh, and pain during his life uh, but I'm glad uh, 
that he left with us to tell us that don't give up because God is not through with you yet. The Bible said that there were men, so-called friends that came to Job and told Job, you must have done something wrong. But isn't it good to know that when folks don't understand and folks can't figure it out, the Lord is still watching over you. You read the story, Job lost sons, Job lost daughters, Job lost the riches of the land. But won't God turn around your situation because everything that Job lost, he got it back. And I came to tell somebody that when you are maturing in the word of God, you might go through some storms. It might rain in your life. You might be hurt and abused. But the Lord will give back to you those things you've already lost. And I'm a witness here today that the Lord is able to make a way out of no way. And I've learned as I'm a two in the Lord that when I'm going through something, I realize that God is shaping me and molding me and he won't give me more than I can bear. And that's why I'm here to testify, to tell you, just hold on just a little while longer and the Lord will make a way. The Lord will bring you out. The Lord, as the old church said, will build bridges over troubled water. Is there anybody here today that can testify that he's able to make a way? Thank you, Job, for leaving your story to tell me that I might, I might go through a storm, but God is right with me. Thank you, Job, to reminding me that so-called friends are turning their back on me, but God is with me. He's shaping me. He's molding me. He's perfecting me to be what he want me to be. And you are seeing today when God has already worked on and that's why in the midst of my storm I can tell the Lord oh, thank you when I'm gone through darkness I can tell the Lord thank you and that might be someone that's here today don't give up don't lose hope don't think you're in it by yourself hold on just a little while longer and the Lord he'll show up every time say every time tell somebody that every time I turn around the Lord the Lord the Lord keeps on blessing me won't he do it won't he make a way can you say yeah can you say yeah can you say yeah he's able let him do it let him make a way let him bring you out let him lift you up you are not by yourself you're not in it by yourself he's able if you trust and believe in him what does a man profit if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? The doors of the church is open. I made up my mind that I'm going through, that I'm going all the way trusting and believing in the Lord that's all we have church is the Lord we're living in a time where 
where it's tough. People are not only wicked, but people are mean. But God is a keeper. And I'm not worried about what tomorrow might bring. Because I'm trusting God for his word. This is your hour. Like a ship that's tossed and driven. Battered by an angry sea. Come on, I've been there. When the storms of life are raging And the fury falls on me Yes, Lord, yes, Lord I wonder what I have done Come on, I think about the suck time That makes this race so hard to run Then I say to my soul Sometimes. Somehow, oh, the Lord will make a way. Somehow, mm. the Lord will make a way. Somehow, the Lord will make a way. Somehow, oh, the Lord will make a way. This is your hour. Like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging, oh, and the fear falls on me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, in your service we ask God that you remove it right now touch your people in a special way bless on every corner of their lives we thank you for this food that we're about to receive we know that it is not what your disciples ate but we know that if you bless it God that everything will be all right in Jesus name we pray and the church said amen
the blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. If there's anyone here today who have not received the right hand of fellowship from the pastor, from the church, we're going to ask that you will come at this time. If there's anyone who have not received the right hand of fellowship, we're going to ask that you come at this time. Come on, church, say amen as they come. <clears throat> Let's get our sister a chair. I want you to come right here. Either one of you brothers. Come on, come, come stand right now. Turn around and face the audience. Start from the rear and follow the doorkeeper from the rear.
Have everyone been served? We're going to ask that you stand. Communion services are solemn and sacred events of worship, given that they represent the blood of Jesus shed for us and his body broken for us. It is precious and not to be partaken in an unworthy manner. Christ passed on the ordinance of communion to the church. It is a holy tradition that goes back to the Lord Jesus Christ and the apostles. On which the Passover had to be sacrificed. And Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us so that we may eat it. They said to him, where do you want us to prepare it? And he said to them, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house that he enters. And you shall say to the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? and he will show you a large furnished upper room prepared there. And they left and found everything just as he had told them and they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table and said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. And in the same manner, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup which is poured out for you is a new covenant in my blood. Let us drink together. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to remember how much you love us. Thank you for another opportunity to remember that you have given us your precious son, Another opportunity to thank Jesus. Jesus for being obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Father, we thank you. We bless you for all that you have given us through the broken body of our Savior. Through all that you've given us through his precious blood. We thank you for what you've made us through this sacrifice. We thank you for who we are, what we have, what we do, the life we live in this world. Because Jesus lived, because Jesus died, and because Jesus rose from the grave and ever lived to make intercession for us. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Help us to remember, help us to remember how much we are loved even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's pass up the cross and I extend to you the right hand of fellowship. Welcome. As pastor of the cross and I extend to you the right hand of fellowship. Welcome.
Well, God, we add to the church as he see fit. Let the church say amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask amen that our, our new members, if you would just, Brother Henry, let them have that seat right there. If you sit down in the front row, we're going to welcome you. Amen. In our way of um, welcome our new members, Brother Shores. Let me have that pew right there. Amen. And I'm going to ask that you sit right there on the front row as Sister Hopkins come. And this is our way of showing uh, our new members how much we love them and, and making them feel at home. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. I was sitting there thinking that today is 4th of July. Amen. <laughs> And the world is celebrating Independence Day, amen? But here at the crossing, today we get to celebrate new members into our family, amen? And so come on, crossing, stand on your feet so that we can celebrate our new members. This body of baptized believers of the Crossing Community Church, welcome to our family, Sister Christine Mamu. Come on, Crossing. Amen. This body of baptized believers of the Crossing Community Church. Welcome to our family, Sister Felina Bello. You are welcome, 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 welcome to the Crossing Community Church. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Amen for for what he has done and we thank him for all of his blessings amen we thank god for all of you for all of our family all of our visitors those who are tuning with us uh, online we thank god for you amen we thank god for you being obedient to his spirit amen now before we dismiss real quick i want to uh, once again introduce amen those who are new with us in our music department we thank god for uh, and I've been saying Sister Mitchell, but it is Dr. Mitchell, amen, and her husband, Brother Mitchell. We thank God for them, amen. And then also for Brother Joseph, amen, known as Joe, amen, for uh, with us, amen. And, and this is his first time, and he had to uh, play the instrument by himself because our keyboard player is ill, amen. Pray for him, amen. And then we thank God for all of our band and for all of our choir members who are back amen let's give them a hand clap of praise and we extend the invitation to anyone who would like to be a part of our singing group amen meet with us uh, this coming tuesday amen for our rehearsal amen we know it's been a while since we've had rehearsal so we we're asking that we get uh, back in the mood for coming out on tuesday for for our rehearsal and we thank God for all of you crossing amen for your commitment and your faithfulness even to some of our visitors who have have really done a great job because if I didn't know any better I would think that you are members and we thank you for your commitment and your faithfulness amen in person as well as online that have been a blessing to the crossing church amen uh, for these last few months we thank you thank you thank you amen I do want to remind you Wednesday amen Amen. We ask that you will pray for Sister Sheila Lindsay. Her mother passed. The service will be here Wednesday at the viewing is from uh, 10 to 11 and the service start at 11 o'clock. That's Sister Sheila Lindsay. Amen. God has, has really richly blessed her to have her mother around for many, many years. Amen. And we're going to celebrate, amen, her life on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Amen. And then Wednesday night, Wednesday night. Amen. Our first Wednesday um, worship, amen, will be uh, here, amen, in person and online. So we do ask uh, for your support, amen. How many of you know it's, it's time to pick up the pieces and return back to the Lord's house, amen, amen. I just thought I'd remind you since we've returned everywhere else, amen. Let's not let the Lord's house be last, amen. Yeah. Let us stand. I passed by a club last night. They had so many cars. <sighs> I didn't see none of y'all cars, so don't get nervous. Amen. Amen. But I said, what would it be like on the first Sunday if the church parking lot can just be full of people who have a mind to serve? Amen. I want you to think about it. God been too good to us. He brought us too far. 
for us to turn our back on him because he's still faithful to us. And truly, we thank God for all that he has done. Every head bow, all our eyes closed. Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for all of your blessings. Now, God, as we prepare to leave this place, but never from your presence, we ask that you watch over us and keep us until we meet again. These words we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. Wave at about six or seven. You didn't come with. Let them know it's just good to be here.